everyone, I'm Adam Harrington. I'm hanging out here in the woods in western Pennsylvania. It's midsummer and there's so many cool mushrooms and plants out there. So in this video, I want to introduce you to one awesome mushroom and one awesome plant that you're really likely to find this time of year if you're exploring your local woods. So let's go see what they are. Right here we have an excellent edible mushroom by the name of the sweet tooth mushroom or the hedgehog mushroom. You can see a cluster of three of them and this one makes four. And so this one has a Latin name, Hydnum Rapandum, that was given by Carl Linnaeus himself in the mid-1700s. He called it Rapandum, which means bent backwards because the margin of this mushroom is kind of bent or reflexed. And at first glance, especially this time of year, this mushroom might resemble a chanterelle mushroom because of this color. But this one's a little different, and I'll tell you why. So this one's irregularly shaped. It has a pale yellow to orangish cap. It has a very thick stalk. So this is a very thick and stout mushroom. It doesn't grow to be too tall or too big, but it's got some substance to it. And it kind of bruises brownish or orange, but the key feature is on the underside. When you look at the fertile surface, it doesn't have gills, it doesn't have pores, but it has spines or teeth. And these are the spore-bearing structures. So chanterelles don't have that. Many other mushrooms don't have that. So if you find an irregularly shaped mushroom this time of year that's kind of orangish on top, it's kind of stout and has teeth on the bottom, it could be Hydnum rapandum or one of the close relatives. So this is an edible mushroom and it has a kind of nutty, fruity, crunchy taste and texture. So I really like cooking it up. As it gets older and bigger, sometimes it can develop bitter flavors. So I like to harvest them when they're a little bit younger. This mushroom also has medicinal value. Research shows that ethanol extracts or alcohol extracts have antimicrobial properties, specifically antibacterial properties. Also, a unique compound isolated from here known as rapandiol has been shown to be cytotoxic against tumorous cells. And so what's interesting about Hydnum rapandum is that even though you, if you look in field guides, this one looks exactly like Hydnum rapandum, that hedgehog mushroom, this one might not actually be that mushroom because it seems that that name represents a whole group of mushrooms that are hiding out within that name. So it's kind of like there's a cryptic species thing going on with Hydnum rapandum, and we can't know for sure unless we do genetic testing. But for now, we can call this in the field Hydnum rapandum, the hedgehog mushroom, the sweet tooth mushroom. It is an edible mushroom as long as you go through all those features, and it has some medicinal value. So get out there and see if you can find Hydnum rapandum or one of the species that we are calling Hydnum rapandum. Right here within this whole colony of chestnut oak seedlings lies a little achlorophyllous plant known as yellow pine sap. Kind of looks like a fungus, but it's not a fungus, but it does hook up with a fungus. And at first glance, this wildflower plant kind of looks like Indian pipe, Monotropa uniflora. Maybe you're familiar with that plant, but that one's pretty much all white and it grows in dense clusters that eventually turn grayish and blackish. But this one, yellow pine sap, has a Latin name which is interchangeable, the genus and species. So some people call this Monotropa hypopitis, some people call it Hypopitus monotropa, but hypo is under and pitus is pine because typically it's growing underneath pine trees. This one grows to be several inches tall and it's slightly velvety and hairy. And it's common in the eastern United States, it's common in the Midwest, and a little bit in the western United States as well. Now there are two words to describe this plant. I already mentioned one. One is achlorophyllus. The second is mycoheterotroph. So what do those mean? Well, achlorophyllus means non-chlorophyll containing plant. It doesn't contain chlorophyll. There's no green to it. It's yellowish and there are like pinkish hues to it as well. And mycoheterotroph because this organism gets its nutrients through a fungal network. And it's a three-way network, kind of like Indian pipe. So yellow pine sap hooks up with a fungus, which is then hooked up to a tree. So the tree shuttles carbon to the fungus, which then transport that carbon all the way to the yellow pine sap. So with Indian pipe, that whitish parasitic plant, that one hooks up mainly with russula mushrooms, those brightly colored mushrooms. This one pretty much hooks up with a genus known as Tricholoma, but also a genus known as Hydnellum. So that's specifically what it hooks up with and it derives nutrients that way. And people are saying that this doesn't really give anything in return. So it's more of a taker rather than a giver, but it's my belief that we just don't have the tools available to really know what's going on. So perhaps this is doing such an important thing in this forest, we just don't know what that is yet. So yellow pine sap, you can call it monotropa hypopitis or hypopitis monotropa, but look for it now. It's not always easy to find because it's so small and it blends right in, but I'm pretty sure you'll be glad when you do find this plant. So there we have it, one awesome mushroom, one awesome plant. I hope you have the chance to get out there this time of year and look for both of those species. Thanks for watching, happy mushroom and plant hunting.